What's happening everybody? Welcome back to another garage episode. Today is a good day because we get to dig into this box and finally get to the engine for Randy Savage. He needs a good heart. We're going to build him one and put it in there and this thing's going to rip. But before we get to digging into this little box of goodies that I got back from Jeff at OCP, I'm going to show you guys something that you might also notice. New work surface. Now what you guys see here is a new metal work surface for my workbench here. I am tired of working on wood covered by shop towels that get soaked and is an absolute mess all the time. And I'm always worried about stuff falling through all the cracks in the wood on the bench. So I decided to build myself a steel workbench like you guys see in most of the nice shops. Now this is pretty basic, it's pretty cheap, but uh, it should help clean things up make things a little bit easier to slide around, uh, keep things organized and uh, easier to clean up. But basically, all I really did was I went to Tractor Supply and I got a couple of sheets of, I think it was weld steel, and I think this is 18 gauge, somewhere around there, 18 or 22 gauge, it's pretty thin, but I basically got two, tw uh, what was it? Two foot by two foot pieces, 24 inches by 24 inches, set them down side by side, I tried to, you know, measure out nicely, even though I didn't cut the wood very straight, but we won't worry about that. Don't look at it. Uh, all I did was set it down, measure over the edge here. I think I did an uh, inch and an eighth over the edge right here so I could waterfall the edge, overlap it because I didn't want to catch my hands on any edges as I was like sweeping something off or um, running my hands over something or running my hands on here. I don't know. I just figured I might catch an edge or something or a corner hanging up over here, especially sliding stuff on. So I just waterfalled the edge and drilled some holes and ran some screws in there. And now I have a nice metal work surface. And uh, I don't think it's stainless, but I can cover it with a little bit of WD-40 or some oil, clean it off pretty easy, and it shouldn't rust, hopefully. Plus I have so many parts going on here, it stays pretty oily as it is. But this should help make things uh, clean up run a little bit easier around here. I don't have to worry about stuff falling through the cracks that I have lost a few nice uh, washers and spacers and things like that that go into the engine down to the floor somewhere and I still don't know where they are so I had to get new ones. But this is gonna be nice. So with all that, let's dig into this box. Okay, so what we have in here are some parts that I actually left with Jeff Schrick up at OCP. We got a head, a cylinder, some other goodies in here. So let's rip these out and take a look at what we have. Oh, the secret to going fast. Not really. So I think I sent this up to him pretty early on. Basically it was a, a cylinder that I had used already. It's a aluminum cylinder from, who is it? Cylinder Works. So we got a Cylinder Works standard bore cylinder and I sent it back up to him to get vapor blasted and honed and it looks Freaking gorgeous right now. Fresh hone job on there. That's gonna, that's gonna come in handy when we put that new piston in there. Fresh rings. Also, I'm going with something a little bit different this time. Instead of going high compression or anything crazy, uh, I went with a JE piston. I've heard they're a little bit lighter. I don't know, I'm just gonna mess with it, try it. And I'm not going crazy. We're going 12.8 to one. So it's a little higher compression than stock. Oh, look at that, of course, sticker. I love that you buy a sticker and it comes with a free piston. Sticker's expensive though. Oh, there's all my rings, my wrist pin. What do we have here? Oh, cool, it's my data sheet, my spec sheet. Ooh. Oh, beautiful and of course, got the arrow, exhaust side. Thank you, so I don't get that backwards. You know what, let's get this box off here so I can get everything else up here. So I'm gonna try a JE piston. I've heard they're light, I've heard they're good, good quality, and I've got this weird 12.8 to one compression ratio. Now I've heard of other pistons, but I think like Duncan Racing might have a 12.8 Baja piston or something like that, it's supposed to be Little less compression, make the engine just a little bit more reliable. Should be able to run it a little bit longer, but I can still run pump gas. So that's a good thing. Now, for the piece de resistance. Uh, of course, box within a box. This is a part I'm really excited about. 
there's two things in here actually. One, oh wow, yeah, all my old valves and exhaust studs and everything. <laughs> well, thank you, Jeff, for sending those back. At least I've got some spares now. But here is the OCP ported head. Oh my gosh, hold on. I'll come back once I've cut all this crap off. All right, well, there it is. Freshly ported by OCP. Nice full port job on the head. We've got fresh valves, fresh retainers, fresh springs, fresh seals, fresh guides. And I think we went plus one on the valves. So we've got a brand new OCP head. Look at that, labeled right there by him. Ready to bolt on and make some power. Oh, that's such a good looking piece. Okay. And then last but not least, we've got this little spicy secret, a webcam. Now, I don't remember what grind this is, but she's definitely a spicy cam and should make some great power. I've never run a webcam, so this will be a first. Yeah. But this is going to be fun to play with. I've run stage two hot cams pretty much in everything so far, and they're a great cam for the money. but. Webcams, of course, are probably a little bit better. Just, uh, I didn't want to spend the $600. The cool thing is, I didn't have to spend 600 bucks. It came in the engine I bought. Now, this is a used engine. Uh, for a lot of you guys, all these Honda engines, uh, they're everywhere right now. So I was able to pick one up from somebody used, so I'm definitely going to go through the engine. Uh, found out that it is a old Racer's Edge engine. It had a Racer's Edge ported head. Sold that to somebody else who can use it. And I wanted to use Jeff's head here. So I've got to go through this engine because as we know, you never know what the bottom end is going to look like in these engines after however many hours they've had on it. And like I said, it's a uh, Racer's Edge engine. It sat there for a while, then was bought, then parted out. And I bought the engine after I think Dirt Fiend helped get the thing running. And then uh, that person then sold it to me. So here it is, but I know that there's a lot of hours on it now because I've gone through the grapevine and I'm going to basically have to replace everything. Good thing I have most of that stuff. The other thing that's going in there because this crank, even though it's good, I had to go with something cooler. Ah, the internals. In fact, let's open this thing up, get a good look. Couldn't stop there with just the head and the piston and all that. I had to go and take an OEM crank. I had bought a pair of cranks, short story here. Bought a pair of cranks from Jeremy Ladon on the East Coast and I think I paid 180 bucks. Thanks Jeremy, by the way. Just a couple of OEM cranks. It always pays to still go through them and make sure that they're good cranks, which they were, but I sent these up to, uh, well, just this one. I had a spare OEM rod that was brand new. It was a takeoff because I had used a Carrillo rod for something else. Sent this up to Crankworks up here in Phoenix and they went ahead and yanked it apart, inspected it, found that the pin and the bearings and everything in there were starting to go. Uh, in fact, there was a lot of wear on the pin in there. I'll show you here in a second. And this thrust washer on either side was starting to eat into um, the rod a little bit on the side or the rod was eating into the thrust washers basically. So. I had them rebuild the crank, fresh pin, bearing, thrust washers, new rod, and polished this bad boy. So it's called friction reduction, but they basically got this thing all polished up for me. So it's ready to go in. And let me show you what I'm talking about. Always pays to go through and inspect whatever you're buying, because there's tons of used parts out there. It's always a little bit cheaper to buy used. However, you may have to put new parts in it. So. This is what those guys found. If you guys can see that. There's a lot of, there's two grooves right here. You can actually feel it when you run your hand across it. So that must have been where on the compression stroke, it was banging on that rod and starting to go finally. And that thing was uh, on its last leg. So definitely glad I sent it up there. They inspected it. I told them to do the extra stuff. You don't have to go the extra mile. It's fairly cheap to actually rebuild your crank. It's not a whole lot of money for some thrust washers and a bearing if you're just rebuilding it. So save yourself the headache of a blown engine. Go ahead and just get a fresh rebuilt crank. Good to go. 
So there you basically have the engine in a nutshell, what I'm going to be doing to it. Putting a nice top end on it, it's going to breathe well, going to have a nice cam, good piston, good smooth crank. And the bottom end will have fresh bearings and everything in there. I'm pretty sure the transmission is good because it was a running engine when I bought it. But basically, I'm still waiting on a few seals and I think the two crank bearings. I have the transmission bearings, all the other bearings are going to the uh, cases there, but I still need the crank bearings to come to me in the mail. So what we're going to do in this video is basically dig into the engine, pull it apart, find what else might or might not be wrong with it, and start prepping it to get rebuilt. I did it. Remove the gasket in one piece. <laughs> well, okay, not completely, but you know, that's so satisfying. Don't have to go in there and scrape all that out. Oh, getting the whole clutch at once, I guess. All right. That doesn't happen a lot. Looks like this has been replaced with some hints and fibers and springs, because that's what that looks like to me. A little bit stiffer springs. Yeah, there's some pretty good teeth worn in there. But I will be getting a hints and billet proof setup for this. I could probably actually maybe piece by piece it. Start with maybe a basket and hub, and then go get a pressure plate later. But so far, yeah, just looking pretty good. I mean, everything in here is nice and clean. It looks pretty brand new. So that's good. Now, for this counterbalancer, you got this special little nut for that thing. You got to have one of these little bad boys, which is good. Come on, baby. There you go. And I got a fresh one of these. Even though that's, that feels brand new. That must have been replaced too. And in case you guys are wondering why I'm using ratchet first before I use that thing, it's because I really want to be careful with all the threads in these cases. I hate it when I find strip bolts in these things because they're almost impossible to tighten back down again. Loctite. Blessing under curse. stuck 
that woodruff key is. Now I need to remove this little bit out of the way. Whoops. There we go. That was weird. I have a new one, so I'm going to compare this one to it, see how it is, and probably keep that as a spare since I've got to put a fresh one in there anyway. If you're wondering how I keep track of where all these bolts go, I mean, one, some of them have some special things on here, which I'm going to need a new one of these, but this is basically just an oil hold down bolt, but this one runs all the way through the case. I just organize them on this piece of cardboard, basically how they lay out. When I take them out, I try to lay them in order, and then I'll just cut some holes in some cardboard, and I've got it labeled. These are the inner center case bolts. These are the outer center case bolts, and they're put in an order, rough shape of how they would go on the case, and then like trans drain bolt, just label it, stick it through the cardboard, and that'll take care of those for a bit. Help you organize the bolts so you don't sit there for, I don't know, however long it would take you to figure out which one goes where, because they are different lengths. I mean, you can see it on the back side here. It's all kinds of different length bolts. So helps tidy it up. Well, that actually didn't take too long. Uh, the more I do these, the better I get, a little bit more confident each time. So they're coming apart a little bit easier and uh, putting them back together is getting a little bit better by memory. It also helps when the engine doesn't fight you to come apart. I do have a couple of stuck dowels and things like that, but I don't need to take them out. I'll just make sure I put some anti-seize in there to make sure they come back apart again if I ever have to get back in there. Uh, besides some notchy bearings and that little bit of stuck dowels, maybe a little bit of debris in there. This engine's actually in really good shape. The transmission looks good. Everything's uh, pretty clean. I found some new stuff in there, some old stuff. I've already gone ahead and replaced a couple of transmission bearings, pulled out one of the main bearings just to take a look at that little uh, scar you guys see in there. And I've also got that broken uh, bearing retainer, but that's not a huge deal. I didn't find any debris in there or any metal shavings. So it, uh, I did find a chunk of it, but that was down in the sump where the oil pump is. So. Uh, other than that, everything looks good. I can't wait to get this thing back together. So you guys will just have to come back in the next video. We're going to start putting it back together with all the new parts, press a couple new bearings in, and we should be ready to rock. I hope you guys like this stuff, and I can't wait to get this thing together and show you guys the completed product because it takes forever, it seems like. But good to have you here. I'll see you guys in the next video.